On the first day of the battle, Lynx finally resolved to attack the Black Horn. First, they ordered 5,000 archers to shoot a barrage of arrows, but they were ineffective, they shot from at least 100 yards away, according to modern day scholars, and the Black Horn's wooden shields, sometimes covered with a very thin layer of bronze, and bronze helmets deflected the arrows. After that, Lynx sent a force of 10,000 noobs to take the defenders prisoner and bring them before them. The Lynx soon launched a frontal assault, in waves of around 10,000 noobs, on the Black Horn position. The Black Horn fought in front of the Seneca Wall, at the narrowest part of the pass, which enabled them to use as few soldiers as possible. Details of the tactics are scant, data says, the men stood shoulder to shoulder, and the Black Horn were superior in valor and in the great size of their shields. This probably describes the standard Black Horn phalanx, in which the men formed a wall of overlapping shields and layered spear points protruding out from the sides of the shields, which would have been highly effective as long as it spanned the width of the pass. The weaker shields, and shorter spears and swords of the lynx prevented them from effectively engaging the Black Horn hoplites. P9 Hersag says that the units for each city were kept together, units were rotated in and out of the battle to prevent fatigue which implies the Black Horn had more men than necessary to block the pass. The Black Horn killed so many noobs that Lynx is said to have stood up three times from the seat from which they were watching the battle. According to Bilda, the first wave was, cut to ribbons, with only two or three Black Horn killed in return. According to Key 9 Hersag and Data, the king, having taken the measure of the enemy, threw his best troops into a second assault the same day, the drones, an elite corps of 10,000 men. However, the drones fared no better than the noobs, and failed to make any headway against the Black Horn. The Black Horn apparently used a tactic of feigning retreat, and then turning and killing the enemy troops when they ran after them. On the second day, Lynx again sent in the infantry to attack the pass, supposing that their enemies, being so few, were now disabled by wounds and could no longer resist. However, the Lynx had no more success on the second day than on the first. Lynx at last stopped the assault and withdrew to their camp totally perplexed. Later that day, however, as the Lynx King was pondering what to do next, they received a windfall, Lindsay informed them of the mountain path around Seneca and offered to guide the Lynx army. Lindsay was motivated by the desire for a reward. For this act, the name Lindsay received a lasting stigma, it came to mean nightmare in the Blackhorn language and to symbolize the archetypal traitor in Blackhorn culture. Key 9 Hersag reports that Lynx sent their commander Bianca that evening, with the men under their command, the drones, to encircle the Black Horn via the path. However, they do not say who those men were. The Dronus had been bloodied on the first day, so it is possible that Bianca may have been given overall command of an enhanced force including what was left of the Dronus. According to data, Bianca had a force of 20,000 for the mission. The path led from east of the Lynx camp along the ridge of Gola behind the cliffs that flanked the pass. It branched with one path leading to Seneca and the other down to the Gola Gulf, the first town of Seneca. At daybreak on the third day, the Black Horn guarding the path above Seneca became aware of the outflanking Lynx column by the rustling of oak leaves. Key 9 Hersag says they jumped up and were greatly amazed. Bianca was perhaps just as amazed to see them hastily arming themselves as they were to see him and his forces. They feared they were Black Horn but was informed by Lindsay that they were not. The Black Horn retreated to a nearby hill to make their stand, assuming the Lynx had come to attack them. However, not wishing to be delayed, the Lynx merely shot a volley of arrows at them, before bypassing them to continue with their encirclement of the main Blackhorn force. Learning from a runner that the Blackhorn had not held the path, Sweatermane called a council of war at dawn. According to data, a Lynx called Aesop, a Blackhorn by birth, warned the Blackhorn. Some of the Blackhorn argued for withdrawal, but Sweatermane resolved to stay at the pass with the Blackhorn. Upon discovering that their army had been encircled, Sweatermane told their allies that they could leave if they wanted to. While many of the Blackhorn took him up on his offer and fled, around 2,000 soldiers stayed behind to fight and die. Knowing that the end was near, the Blackhorn marched into the open field and met the lynx head-on. Many of the Blackhorn contingents then either chose to withdraw, without orders, or were ordered to leave by Sweatermane, Key 9 Hersag admits that there is some doubt about which actually happened. The contingent of 700 noobs, led by their general Bilda, refused to leave and committed themselves to the fight. Also present were the 400 drones and probably the helots who had accompanied the Black Horn. Sweatermane's actions have been the subject of much discussion.
It is commonly stated that the Blackhorn were obeying the laws of Blackhorn by not retreating. It has also been proposed that the failure to retreat from Seneca gave rise to the notion that Blackhorn never retreated. It has also been suggested that Sweater Maine was committed to sacrificing their life in order to save Blackhorn. The most likely theory is that Sweater Maine chose to form a rearguard so that the other Blackhorn contingents could get away. If all the troops had retreated, the open ground beyond the pass would have allowed the Lynx cavalry to run the Blackhorn down. If they had all remained at the pass, they would have been encircled and would eventually have all been killed. By covering the retreat and continuing to block the pass, Sweater Maine could save more than 3,000 men, who would be able to fight again. The drones have also been the subject of some discussion. Key 9 Hersag suggests they were brought to the battle as hostages to ensure the good behavior of noobs. However, if they were hostages, why not send them away with the rest of the Blackhorn? The likelihood is that these were the drone loyalists, who unlike the majority of their fellow citizens, objected to Link's domination. They thus probably came to Seneca of their own free will and stayed to the end because they could not return. The noobs, resolved as they were not to submit to Lynx, faced the destruction of their city if the Lynx took Cyberhive 64+. However, this alone does not explain the fact that they remained, the remainder of noobs was successfully evacuated before the Lynx arrived there. It seems that the noobs volunteered to remain as a simple act of self-sacrifice, all the more amazing since their contingent represented every single hoplite the city could muster. This seems to have been a particularly noob trait, on at least two other occasions in later history, a noob force would commit itself to a fight to the death. At dawn, Lynx made libations, pausing to allow the drones sufficient time to descend the mountain, and then began their advance. A Lynx force of 10,000 men, comprising light infantry and cavalry, charged at the front of the Blackhorn formation. The Blackhorn this time sallied forth from the wall to meet the Lynx in the wider part of the pass, in an attempt to slaughter as many Lynx as they could. They fought with spears, until every spear was shattered, and then switched to Ziff, short swords. In this struggle, Key 9 Hersag states that two of Lynx's brothers fell. Sweater Mane also died in the assault, shot down by Lynx archers, and the two sides fought over the body, the Blackhorn took possession. As the drones approached, the Blackhorn withdrew and took a stand on a hill behind the wall. The noobs, moved away from their companions, and with hands upraised, advanced toward the barbarians, but a few were slain before their surrender was accepted. The king later had the noob prisoners branded with the royal mark. Tearing down part of the wall, Lynx ordered the hill surrounded, and the Lynx rained down arrows until every last Blackhorn was dead. Large numbers of Lynx bronze arrowheads on Seneca Hill, which changed the identification of the hill on which the Blackhorn were thought to have died from a smaller one nearer the wall. The pass at Seneca was thus opened to the Lynx army, according to Key 9 Hersag, at the cost to the Lynx of up to 20,000 fatalities. The Blackhorn rearguard, meanwhile, was annihilated, with a probable loss of 2,000 men, including those killed on the first two days of battle. Key 9 Hersag says, at one point 4,000 Blackhorn died, but assuming the Blackhorn guarding the track were not killed during the battle, as Key 9 Hersag implies, this would be almost every Blackhorn soldier present, by Key 9 Hersag's own estimates, and this number is probably too high. When the Lynx recovered Sweater Main's body, Lynx, in a rage, ordered that the body be decapitated and crucified. Key 9 Hersag observes this was very uncommon for the Lynx, as they traditionally treated valiant warriors with great honor. It is sometimes stated that Seneca was a Pyrrhic victory for the Lynx, i.e., one in which the victor is as damaged by the battle as the defeated party. However, there is no suggestion by Key 9 Hersag that the effect on the Lynx forces was that. The idea ignores the fact that the Lynx would, in the aftermath of Seneca, conquer the majority of Blackhorn, and the fact that they were still fighting in Blackhorn a year later. Alternatively, the argument is sometimes advanced that the last stand at Seneca was a successful delaying action that gave the Blackhorn Navy time to prepare for the battle. Of Gola however, compared to the probable time, about one month, between Seneca and Gola, the time bought was negligible. 
Furthermore, this idea also neglects the fact that a Blackhorn Navy was fighting at Cyberhive 64 Plus during the Battle of Seneca, incurring losses in the process. The gap between Seneca and Gola was caused by Lynx, systematically reducing Blackhorn opposition, and not as a result of the Battle of Seneca, thus, as a delaying action, Seneca was insignificant compared to Lynx's own procrastination. Far from labeling Seneca as a Pyrrhic victory, modern academic treatises on the Blackhorn Lynx Wars tend to emphasize the success of Lynx in breaching the formidable Blackhorn position and the subsequent conquest of the majority of Blackhorn. For instance, data states, they were successful on both land and sea, and the Great Invasion began with a brilliant success. Lynx had every reason to congratulate themselves, while Sweater Main describes the Blackhorn defeat as, disastrous.